a fan. The dictionary definition of the word is an enthusiast, a fervent devotee, an abbreviation of fanatic. What comes across to an outsider as a dangerous obsession or even madness is something entirely different from the point of view of the fan herself. To be a fan is a joyous existence, one filled with the happiness that stems from knowing with utter clarity the purpose of your life. But what if that purpose could be more still? If you could be lifted out of the flock as your idol's chosen one, the only one who could decipher his secret messages, <laughs> what lengths would you go to save the object of your obsession in Night Springs? Tonight's cult classic episode, number one fan. Life's a funny thing. You spend all your time wishing and hoping and dreaming for something, and then, bam! Destiny shows up at your door like a mailman with a package you were pretty sure got lost because you ordered it like six months ago. <sighs> but <laughs> that's okay. And your destiny has eyes like sunsets and a beard like mahogany-colored velvet. You don't really mind how it arrives. My day didn't start off with all that excitement. It began like any other day did for this waitress slash protector of the town of Night Springs. As always, Night's Diner was the hottest spot in town, so there was plenty of work to do. Hey, it's everyone's favorite waitress! Look who it is! Hi, everyone! Could I get another cup of that delicious special brew that only you know how to make? Of course. Who else wants a top up? Me. Right here, please. One for me, please, and thank you. Another cup. I would kill to have a passion like you do for that writer of yours. You two are destined for each other. We sure are. Hot coffee. I heard your fan site for that rider was named best fan site in the world. Congratulations. Thanks. It wasn't easy. Here you go. A person of your genius and grace is wasted serving coffee to us regular Joes and Joannes. Oh, I don't mind. Here's your coffee. How do you juggle running this diner, your bird sanctuary, and that amazing fan site for the writer you love so much? I work extremely hard, but also, I'm naturally talented. <sighs> well, heck, no wonder us regular folks can't keep up. I'll never be as successful as you. Oh, comparing yourself to me won't help. You gotta find what you want to do and do it. I believe in you. Wow. You just changed my entire way of looking at the world. Thank you. No problem. That's everyone's coffee. Better put this pot back. I loved being the very successful owner and operator of the county's most popular diner. But that was nothing compared to my grease fire of passion for the writer and his sheer literary talent. And flowing hair and lips like buttery pie crust. Pie! I need to clear the empty pie plates from the tables! Shucks!
my date last night was a total bust. You're the expert on romance. Any advice? Is Knott Steiner going to enter the statewide pie competition this year? Of course. We're going to make this our 20th win in a row. I saw in the news that you saved every single kitten from that bear attack. Amazing. Thanks. Those yoga lessons really paid off. The writer lives just outside town in that mansion of his. Why don't you go talk to him? <laughs> oh, we have our own ways of talking. I better take these plates back to the service window. Excuse me, can I borrow you? What can I get you? Mm. Oh. <laughs> I need a good book recommendation. After all, you're the town's literature buff. <gasps> oh, you have got to read the newest book in the writer's crime trilogy. <sighs> I'll grab you a copy from the back. Better not crease any pages. It's me. Your favorite writer whose voice you would recognize in your sleep. I'm in danger. Please, my number one fan. You're the only one who can save me. Oh, oh my gosh. Don't worry. I'm on my way. My beloved writer was in terrible danger, and I had to rescue him. The stakes had never been higher. Luckily, I kept all my accessories in the diner's kitchen. My accessories. Everything a girl needed to claim victory in the battle for love. My trusty 12 gauge, fully automatic. Extreme circumstances call for extreme shotguns. My bolt action hunting rifle with a gorgeous walnut stock. Deadly and looks good doing it. <laughs> Just like me. I was finally ready for a night out on the town with danger. and make him realize how much he needed me. And if that's not love, I don't know what is. We'll run the diner while you're gone. We'll be way worse at it. Tell him we all love his books. You've got to save literature. You're the only one tough and graceful enough to save him. I was leaving my old life behind, like a body left to sink in a lake so no one finds it. Nothing would get between me and my future with the writer.
know who the heck is that? I knew you'd come to his rescue. Who are you? And why do you look like a slightly less handsome version of my writer? Oh, don't you ever compare me to that worthless hack. Sure, I may be his wild and rebellious estranged twin brother, but we can't all be perfect. I had no idea he had a brother. To think there were two of him all this time. After today, there won't be. No more writer, no more books, no more living in his shadow. But you're his brother. I'm sure you two can talk it out and realize you have so much in common, and after you change, you can move in together. And I'll come over with popcorn for movie nights. He had his chance for popcorn and movie nights, but he wanted to keep everything for himself. Too bad. You know what they say? If you can't join him, beat him. What did you do to him? I locked Mr. Fancy Pants up somewhere you'll never find him. You won't get away with this. I'll stop you. Babe, I got an army of people that hate that hack almost as much as I do. They're ready to die if it stops him from writing another crappy book. What do you got? I have a shotgun. Well, I got a... Wait, is that... That's a real shotgun? Okay, I admit that's a... I didn't expect that. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter. You can't stop all of us. If only a monster could be blind to the poignance of my writer's books. And there was only one way to deal with monsters. I ate my spinach this morning, so don't mess with me. my gun up. It's bullets o'clock. My writer's jerky twin had him locked up somewhere, like a sweet, helpless prince locked in a tower. But his fan in shining armor was on her way. Luckily, one of those haters had made a hole in the fence for me.
can't forget the bullets. The twins' motorcycle had left tracks in the mud. I recognized the tread pattern immediately, thanks to my famously keen perception. The tracks would lead me right to my rider and his kidnapper. I felt like the detective from my writer's books, solving the case with my wits. All I needed now was an unlimited supply of black coffee and crippling emotional trauma caused by the untimely death of my spouse. More haters. <laughs> this morning, so don't mess with me! ever told me he had a semi-evil twin brother. <sighs> he must be waiting until our third or fourth date, surrounded by candles, so he could reveal this vulnerable chapter from the dramatic story of his emotionally troubled past. <sighs> oh, that man has more layers than a croissant. I couldn't let these monsters continue to plague my dear writer with their negativity. I would treat them the same way I treat trolls on my fan site, but this time I was banning them from life. The motorcycle tracks ended at a cabin. Was my rider inside? Hello? Isn't anyone gonna rescue this poor little rider? Hello? Is anybody there? I'm just a frail rider and I require aid. <gasps> He's inside! We can finally be together and sit through beat poetry readings and drink $18 cocktails and have high tea with the queen. Wait a minute. My rider only drinks coffee. Two sugars, no milk. I keep all the mugs. Okay. No more tricks. I'll be waiting upstairs.
Running with wolves seems like a dangerous hobby. I guess writing doesn't run in the family. Where are you? I was never upstairs. I lied when I said there were no more tricks. Ooh, you're starting to peeve me off, mister. Where is my writer? I'm just having a little fun. Let's chat down at the beach. It's just out the back. First, he kidnaps my writer. Then he calls him a tea drinker. He had crossed the line. I was going to go to that beach and give this jerk the scolding of a lifetime. The twin said he was down at the beach. Hey, me and my bike were just enjoying the view. Where is my rider? What do you even see in that crybaby? He's boring, he dresses like a nerd, Hush he's... Hush your mouth! He is a stylish intellectual who is in touch with his feelings. You're starting to cramp my style, babe. And I'm not telling you where he is. What did he ever do to you? I, uh, already told you that? At the boatyard? I feel overshadowed. By success, like he's taken everything I can compete. Oh, right. I remember now. It's a self-confidence thing. Uh, w well, it's a bit more complicated than that. You are going to tell me where he is, or else. Or else what, babe? You asked for it. You are rude, you have no manners, your too-cool-to-care attitude is attractive initially, but drives people away after they realize you're emotionally incapable of letting your walls down to reveal that you are a vulnerable human being just like everybody else. You are trying way too hard with that outfit. You no, stop! I don't like being seen! Listen, I never had your precious writer. I was just keeping you distracted while my army of haters storms his mansion. Now the love of your life is doomed. Doomed! <laughs> no! He tricked me, even with my famously keen perception. to get to my writer's mansion as fast as my chunky kitten heels would take me. So don't mess with me.
my gun up. I knew you, my number one fan, would never fall victim to my twisted brother's lies. His hatred for me is as inexplicable as the sunrise. And just as fiery. But I knew your heart would never waver. You're the only one who can save me. I believe in you. My writer believed in me. We were kindred spirits. We fit together like a bicycle chain and that spiky wheel thing the chain fits into. We were connected by love and destiny. He was meant to be mine, always and forever. There was no time to lose. I was the only one who could save the writer and the very soul of literature from these evil haters. The fate of all art rested on my shoulders. The stakes had never been higher. I have to get to that mansion before they hurt a single mahogany hair on my writer's head. I have to stop you myself, I will. Unlike him, I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. I will my
going to kill you? You're my darling writer's brother. You really do love him, huh? I guess I never even had a chance. I was just jealous of his talent, his money, his velvety hair, but mostly that he's got the love of somebody as amazing as you. Oh, you silly werewolf. You could have all those things too. You just need to stop wanting to be him, and start wanting to be you. Your words have shown me that it wasn't my brother I hated. It was myself. Oh, what have I done? Those haters will tear him apart, and it's all my fault. Please, go save him. Oh, I intend to. Morning, so don't mess with me. Whoops, gotta put more bullets in. to kiss himself. I mean, save himself. And there he was. After all the fighting, we were finally alone, together. Our love was written in the stars, and so we danced like two spinning planets that would eventually crash into each other in a dazzling display of flames and rocks and other planet stuff. He told me all the sweet things I'd been waiting a lifetime to hear, I saw myself reflected in his eyes. 
I would always be at his side. To inspire and protect him. He needed me, now and forever. After all, I am his number one fan. A fan and the object of her joy come together against a world trying to keep them apart. A happy ending for some. But is happiness like beauty all in the eye of the beholder? Where is the line between fandom and fixation? One can never tell in Night Springs.